instructional part of the video. You can get tabs and backing tracks if you go to my website www.erichaugenguitar.com. For additional resources, consider supporting me on Patreon. And for information about the sound tools I'm using in this video lesson, go ahead and click on the description box underneath in your YouTube player. Now let's get to learning. The opening. Let's look at that. We're in A minor. And we're going to start with 7 on the A, 5, 7, 5, 4. Good note to add to a blues scale if you don't think about that one. He's a special one. It's the ninth of the key. 5, 4, 5, 7, and then if you can, get a little... A little Hen Hendrix 5 and 5 that stays clean. Or maybe I don't do it. I think I do it the next time. And then, yeah, so that's a 5 uh, with my thumb on the low A. I don't know if you can hear that. That's a Black Hawk flying over. We're near the Air Force Base here in Pittsburgh. Crazy, okay. So five, index finger gets five and five of the D and G. And so the chords, you know, are A minor, E minor, G, A minor. So like, I'm waiting. That's kind of my, like a, like, could be an E lick, could be a G lick, because yeah, there's a G chord, and like, that's what I'm doing. I'm thinking of this G shape, which is, you know, which is also could be considered an E, so I'm going. Yeah, so I'm using three, five, three, three, four. And then I come around again. That's the time that I do put more double stops in. So it starts out the same, but then when it does that, I bring in this three up here, this, you know, D, because I knew that would be a cool sound. Same thing, yeah, so. That was like, ah, what's a different fill? So that is, uh, you know, this is for my E minor part. So flat on the fives, seven, five. Yeah, I think that's what I do. And then octaves, yeah. Five and, you know, five, muted out. I'm sorry, three, muted out. Five, five and seven, yeah. And then I was like, oh, let me go with that. So that's the, yeah, you know, so shine, where she go home. Uh, five, and, five, skip, seven on my D and my G. Five, skip, eight. Seven, skip, no, wait, is that seven? Nope, that's nine, skip, 12. Nope, wait, sorry, wrong string. Oh, I'm on the wrong string, so I'm sorry. Back that up. I'm starting there. 
So that's five, no, seven and ten. Five and eight. Nine and twelve. No, that's blues still. Just octaves. Big E minor 7 chord there at the 7th fret, 7, 9, 7, 8. Back to my blues zone. Because there's going to be a D minor 7 chord that I'm sort of implying. So it goes, baby, when she's gone. And she's always gone too long. So yeah, she's always gone too long, D. That is. There's that Hendrix thing. 5, 7 cleanly, so that five ups top is still ringing out, and I get that five. Anytime, five, seven, five, she, seven, seven, she goes away, yeah, seven, five, seven, five. And that, that hit again, and then I did, yeah. Yeah, I did that thing again though. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. It goes an octave, and then I kept the octaves going because I was going to lead into a solo that has like four or five of the Hendrix tricks that I can remember. And that time, for some reason, I hybrid picked the octaves, but you can do it with a pick. So, yeah. Five seven, three five, five seven. I'm just going up a blues scale, you can see. Seven nine, five eight, yeah. And then a big, you know, you know, hopefully triumphant bend on the eight. Yep, that's this, you know, just pushing into the tonic. Here's Hendrix fill number, or Hendrix awesome lead lick number one. Straight out all along the watchtower. And that encompasses a Hendrix principle that, like, his licks are very unpredictable. So, five, five, five. There it is. So, yeah, five, five, five. It's like his rhythms are very stuttery. That's why I think really sets Hendrix apart from other great blues lead guitar players. That like his concept of when to put a 16th note versus a 6th tuplet versus a 32nd note versus an 8th note is uniquely his own. Like his licks start... They'll start slow and have this flurry of notes and then slow back down. So that, that's what that lick captures. Let's look at it. That's the cool flat five in it. So five, 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 ten, eight, five, eight, five, and then here's the flurry. That's the Hendrix thing right there. Eight, seven, five, seven. The seven goes up a little bit. He catches it. That's like all over his stuff. That's another one. So you got. You could hear that that sounds so Hendrixy. So, like, yeah, I would practice that lick a lot. <laughs> Hendrix principle number two over bending. <laughs> I mean, come on, that's Hendrix. So, yeah, I'm going from eight to ten. And then, yeah, so this is, I don't know what box you want to call this. To me, this is the. What do I call this box? I am, what am I in? A, yeah, so this is my A tonic. I think of it as, yeah, based, caged wise, is the one that's based off of what we would consider the C shaped A minor. So I'm uh, 10, 13, push it up. I'm only going a whole step at first. And then, though, I push it pretty far, one and a half or two steps, depending on what, ha you know, depending on whatever. Which I think he got that from Albert King. I think I hear Albert King do those overbends sometimes. 
which is, yeah, that's a very Hendrix thing. And then, uh, next Hendrix thing, the, the one note goes up. <laughs> this Mustang, can I get it? Mustang gets real crowded in this region right here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is now out of yet another position of pentatonic minor, what I consider based off of the A minor shape. Uh, yeah, that's what they would call that. Yep. So I'm pushing that 15 up. The 15 goes up and frets out on this guitar, but that's fine. When it goes up, you grab whatever's left of the 15 of the B. That's a Hendrix thing, too. And then there's a flurry there. Which I think on this position will be kind of similar to that lick. So up, down, and up again. 12, down. There's that Hendrix articulation there. Yet another lick that you could practice for a month. And then I just kind of copped it the next octave lower back out of that A shape. What did I do there? I think I go. Yeah, that's what I did. 12. the same thing an octave lower and then wait and then I knew I was approaching the turnaround that's easy <laughs> thank you that's just yes yeah, slidey Hendrix does do slides 9 12 and 9 and then this is more back to his rhythm fill you hear him do this throughout you know if I'm on an E minor 7 which is where the song is at you know because it's getting to that part hear him do that so many times so that's I was like oh that's a rhythm fill but up high it sounds leady off of you know this E minor 7 15 a quick trill and then 12 14 just really just an arpeggio and then yeah a little walk uh, melodically around in it 12 14 12 out of it and I do basically the same thing uh, yeah do basically the same thing there and then land it because that's for the D minor 7 there finally landing on that E which is the fifth of our A minor and then I close it out with again that the bend that goes up and comes back down. And so that time I'm flat on the seven and seven. That's cool. The only other person I, I hear do this who's uh, another Mustang player is Blixa Bargheld from Nick Cave and the Bad Scenes. I know he does this somewhere on the Let Love In record. I, I recognize this lick. So that is, goes up, five, twice, and then, that's again, flat, five and five, hammer it on to seven, seven there on the A, and then thumb gets five. There you go. So this one started with you know, the front arrangement or the arrangement of the verse is, I won't say one of my typical Hendrix double stop uh, arrangements or renditions, but yeah, it's, it's in that realm, thinking about those kind of Hendrixian with the, the index finger flat and the ring finger comes around and gets things and you're trying to get the melody, there's octaves, there's all that stuff. And then though, the solo section, there's the lick that's from All Along the Watchtower, which I think the main takeaway from that for me, well, there's the clever use of the flatted fifth, and this is big, 
the stuttery rhythms of his rapid fire licks. That to me is a very Hendrix thing. Um, it's a very Charlie Parker thing, and I don't know who else does it, but <laughs> yeah, those two I can think of off the top of my head. This idea that when you're doing a, a line or a run, instead of it being just pop, 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 it's pop, pop, da, 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 everything's broken up. Um, it's a really hard thing to do. Um, and he just did it intuitively because he is the almighty lord of awesome electric guitar. Other things in there that, that I think are very Hendrixy. There's um, the overbend on the, the third, goes up to the fourth, goes up to the sharp four, goes up to the five, which I think I've heard Albert Collins do also, and other people. And what are the other things? Oh yeah, the other Hendrix trick, the push one note up, keep it up, and then there's the next string, grab that one on the way down, that one comes down. So you're secretly pushing two strings up, rolling over and getting the next one. So yeah, I snuck in some Hendrix lead tricks to that video. Anyway, take your time with it. There's a lot to think about, a lot to play around with. Thanks for watching.